Hello, in this presentation I will explain how to compute the robot Jacobian matrix of serial manipulators. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to learn how to compute the geometric Jacobian of a robot. We will see how to compute linear and angular velocities of the end effector given the velocities of prismatic or revolute joints. Later, we will see two examples to compute the, uh, the Jacobian of a robot arm with three degrees of freedom and a scalar robot with three degrees of freedom. I will also talk about the, how to compute the analytic Jacobian. In differential kinematics, we can obtain a velocity map between the end effector expressed in linear and angular velocities and the linear or angular joint velocities. The geometric Jacobian J is the matrix that relates those velocity vectors, as it can be seen in the formula highlighted below. This matrix is obtained from the linear and angular velocities that arise after deriving the elements of the end effector transformation matrix. So, the linear velocity of the end effector is the sum of the partial derivatives of the end effector position vector with respect to each joint, while the angular velocity is the sum of the angular velocities in each joint. We will distinguish between prismatic and revolute joints since their contribution to the velocities is different. In the figure on the right, we can see a representative example of a prismatic joint moving with a linear velocity in the direction z i minus 1 and without angular velocity. In this case, we can easily see that the velocity component observed in the end effector is actually the magnitude of the joint velocity, that is, qi dot, in the direction of z i minus 1 axis. The angular velocity component is always zero for this type of joints. On the other hand, revolute joints rotate around the axis z i minus 1 with a magnitude qi dot that is, the angular velocity of the joint. In that case, the linear velocity observed at the, end, at the end of the end effector is indeed a consequence of the rotation of the vector Tn with respect to i-1 around the origin oi-1. It is well known that in that case, the linear velocity is therefore the vector product of the vector z i minus 1 with the vector translation, which is indeed the difference between the position of the end effector and the position of the origin o i minus 1, represented by the vector t i minus 1. The angular velocity in the end effector will be the angular velocity of the joint. In summary, the Jacobian of a robot will be a matrix with six rows, three of those elements corresponding to the linear velocity and three other components corresponding to the angular velocity, and with n columns, as many as robot joints. If the ith joint is prismatic, then the ith column of the Jacobian matrix is computed as indicated in the formula above, while if the ith joint is a revolute joint, then the ith com column of the Jacobian matrix will be computed as indicated just below. The vectors zi-1, tn, ti-1 used in those computations are actually obtained from transformation matrices, usually derived from the navid hartmann method. The transformation of the if-1 link will contain the vectors that we are looking for. Now, we are about to see a couple of examples to consolidate these concepts. The robot shown in the figure is a robot with three degrees of freedom. Actually, we have already seen this uh, robot uh, on, a previous, on previous videos. Here, I just include the dynamic hardware parameters that are being used to describe the position of the reference frame, as you can see. From these parameters, we can obtain transformation matrices A01, A12, and A23 based on the navier hardenberg transformation matrix formula. And analytically, this implies the expressions on the top. 
From these transformation matrices, we can also obtain transformation matrices of the links with respect to the robot base, that is, matrices A02 and A03, where Q23 is the sum of the joints Q2 and Q3. On this slide, I have highlighted the elements that will be used for computing the robot Jacobian. Therefore, the Jacobian matrix for this particular robot with three revolute joints will be computed as indicated in the highlighted expression. The vector Z0 is by definition the vector 001. After some basic trigonometric formula manipulation, we can obtain a closed form expression for the robot Jacobian, as you can see. The rank of this matrix will provide an indication about how many independent directions uh, we can move the end effector for a particular configuration, of course. Indeed, this is a topic uh, for a different video. What I can say here is that for this particular robot, the rank can be a value between two or three depending on the robot configuration. So that means that we might lose the capability for controlling the robot in some specific directions. In this example, now we will compute the Jacobian of a scatter robot with just three degrees of freedom. In the table shown, you can see the actual dynamic heart number parameters used for this example. From these parameters, we can obtain again the dynamic heart number transformation matrices for each link, as well as the transformations for links two and three with respect to the robot base. That's it. That is the link zero. Then, from these transformations, we can get the vectors Z and T as highlighted. The Jacobian matrix for this robot uses the corresponding expressions for the revolute joints for the first two columns and the expression for the prismatic join for the last column. In this case, after manipulating and simplifying the trigonometric expressions, we can see that joints 1 and 2 affect to coordinates x, y, in linear velocities as well as the angular velocity in Z by observing rows 1, 2 and 6 of the Jacobian matrix. The third joint affects to the linear velocity in Z. The analytic Jacobian is the matrix that relates joint velocities with linear velocities or an angular angular ang, uh, sorry an Euler angle velocities of the other factor. This type of Jacobian matrix can be used, for example, when the variable to control are expressing Euler angles. Actually, the Jacobian is computed from the geometric Jacobian that we have seen before, because there's a relation between the velocity of Euler angles and angular velocities, expressed by the matrix T. The highlighted expression is used to compute linear velocities and Euler angle velocities from joint velocities, using the Jacobian, uh, the geometric Jacobian and the inverse of the matrix T. For example, a representation of Euler angles ZXZ implies three consecutive turns alpha, beta, and gamma. The first one around the z-axis, the second one around the x-axis, and the third one again around the z-axis. The velocities for each of these angles affect to the angular velocities in a different way, depending on the actual orientation of the, of the reference frame. In particular, the velocity of the angle alpha affects to, directly to the uh, z-axis, but the velocity of the angle beta affects to the x-axis and y-axis as a consequence of the initial rotation alpha. The velocity of the third angle affects to the three angular velocities due to the resulting rotation matrix of the first two rotations considered in the third column. By combining these angular velocities, we can obtain the matrix T that relates the Euler angle velocities with the angular velocities. As you already know, the representation of Euler angle is not unique and there are many multiple ways to obtain the matrix T that relates those velocities. Here, I also show the formulation for another Euler representation, specifically the XYZ representation used in Copilisim, that is indeed the Roy Piccio uh, representation. In 
this presentation, I have explained how to compute the Robert Jacobian of serial manipulators. Thank you very much.